Hello everyone, my favorite people in all the world. <laughs> Those from Bethel and, and hey, whoever else is watching, the 4.3 million, the 4.3 million that are watching these. Hey, can you guess where I'm at? Yes, I'm here at the school, uh, the church. Uh, there's our wonderful pavilion that we built. Praise the Lord, can't wait to use that. And uh, obviously part of the playground behind me, but I just want to bring to you an update. Uh, we trust you're doing well. Hey, on a day like today, get outside. Fi find a way to get outside. Uh, rake, rake your lawn. Take a walk. Take a bike ride. Get outside. Just sit outside. Just enjoy the sunshine. sunshine. So, uh, just want to bring to you another devotional. Uh, this is going to be a little choppy because I'm holding it in my hand and my rocks that are holding my papers down are <laughs> falling off. But I want to read to you <clears throat> from... Uh, from the passage I was reading this morning, so my daily Bible reading, you know, I just have one of those guides like you do, and so I'm just doing my daily Bible reading, and it brought me to Matthew 1 today, <clears throat> which is kind of a dry chapter because it's a genealogy, uh, the genealogy uh, of Jesus from Abraham and how it descends from Abraham to uh, Jesus. But as I was reading this, the Holy Spirit spoke a couple of things to me, and I want to pass those things on to you here this, this, uh, this afternoon. Now, before I begin, I need to give a shout out. As you well know, Pastor Kim and I, this summer, will be married 37 years. Yay, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I hope the wind isn't going to be howling on this video. Uh, and I love my wife dearly. But, uh, you know, last couple of years, I've developed a love for a couple other gals and I just want to let this out to you know you may know it you may not know it but oh I love that little Faith Nelson <laughs> and I gave out a, sh a shout out to Faith the other day because uh, she was watching my video and she kept on saying Pastor Tom Pastor Tom Pastor Tom and and so I gave a shout out to uh, Faith Nelson and then my other little sweetheart my other little sweetheart <laughs> is Miss Little Alexa Doty and she's just a sweetheart too and I just love kissing on these gals and putting them in my lap and oh they're sweet so Alexa I love you <laughs> I love you sweetheart and and I hope you're gonna obey your mama and daddy and wrestle with Xavier and Mackenzie so I love you Alexa <laughs> so there's my little shout out so I was reading Matthew chapter 1 and let me read to you two verses at the top end and then two verses at the bottom and I just want to give to you some thoughts so uh, verses 5 and 6 of Matthew 1 uh, Salmon was the father of Boaz Rahab was his mother Boaz was the father of Obed Ruth was his mother Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon. His mother was the widow of Uriah. One of the things that are interesting about this genealogy is in Jewish circles, they just don't really mention the women. <laughs> It's chauvinistic for sure, but women are not crucial, even though it's only through a woman that a child is born, right? Okay, um, but this, this genealogy is very unique um, because it includes five different women, five women. And uh, Tamar is mentioned earlier, and that, that's, a sketchy, that's a sketchy woman. Then you have uh, Rahab, hello, sketchy. Uh, Ruth, well, she's, she's, she's a Moabite. One of the dread enemies of Israel, for crying out loud. And then you have uh, the wife of Uriah. Well, of course, that's Bathsheba, who had an adulterous affair. Well, David had the adulterous affair with her, but doesn't look like she was running either. And then the other woman mentioned, of course, is, is Mary, down at, at the tail end of this. All right, so you have these women mentioned. And then uh, we go to the, the, the tail end of Matthew 1, and in verse number 18... It uh, mentions the fifth, the fifth woman that I just mentioned, Mary. And it says, these are the facts concerning the birth of Jesus Christ. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her fiancé, being a man of, of stern principle, decided to break the engagement, but to do it quietly, as she didn't want to publicly disgrace her. So these four verses speak of, of several different women, and um, one of the things that you, you see with, with each of these scenarios is there is much uncertainty. There is much uncertainty 
in these in these marriages with with all four of these Tamar is the only one that's not mentioned as as a marriage per se um, I mean she was but um, there was much uncertainty with with these these marriages and uh, you know we're living in a world of great uncertainty right now in fact I think that that's the key word is the uncertainty of these times I've said this to you several times I'll say it again these devotionals what I what I'm trying to theme these devotionals is a certain word for uncertain times and that word certain can mean sure a sure word for unsure times a certain word for uncertain times and you know with these marriages that that took place we don't have a clue who Salmon was Salmon is really only mentioned in the grand scheme three times three times in scripture several verses but only three times in in reality Salmon we, we just don't know who who he was well he, he was uh, married to Rahab and then of course Boaz and Ruth were married now what was Salmon thinking when he considered marrying Rahab the prostitute you, you, you can't tell me that there wasn't great uncertainty and that people were probably saying, what are you thinking? She's a prostitute, Salmon. She's, you, you don't want to be, I don't care if she helped the Israelites or not. You do not want to be associated with that woman. Uncertainty in that marriage. And then you have, uh, you have Boaz and Ruth. Ruth is a Moabitess. She's a Moabite, the dread enemy of Israel. Why would you want to have any association with someone who is from the Moabites? And there are some scriptures that speak about how they should never be a part of, of, of Israel's uh, lineage, if you will, of, of, their, of their family, of their, um, their circle. Why would you do that? And then, of course, you go down to Mary and Joseph. And Mary and Joseph, Mary was a righteous woman, but she was... She was pregnant before they got married. Now we know that was through the Holy Spirit. And you can't tell me that for all the days that Joseph and Mary were together, there wasn't some murmuring, some soft whispering, some shadow talking that took place. Yeah, she, she said she was a virgin. Yeah, right. Now, Grant, she went on to have, we know for sure, for sure, she went on to have six other children as a minimum we know that without question maybe quite a few more but I'm sure in certain circles it was always thought she and Joseph were having a little hanky-panky before marriage and that that whisper that accusation never went away so uncertainty so in each of these marriages great uncertainty and yet isn't it amazing that God in his providence and wisdom puts these gals in the genealogy of Jesus. I mean, they're just smack dab in the genealogy of Jesus. And there's all kinds of baggage with these gals. Tamar, oh my gosh, that whole story of Tamar, that, that's just nasty. All kinds of uncertainty. And the only one that wasn't was Mary. Now, again, still uncertainty, but she was a, she was a righteous woman. But there are people who just thought, no, that, that, that wasn't legit. And that's, that's the word of, of this day right now is uncertainty. I'm talking with one of my neighbors here just, just a half hour ago. A lot of uncertainty. He's facing it. His wife is facing it. They're wondering about their kids and school and uncertainty. But God is not uncertain. And he brought these gals together with these men and they are forever included in the lineage of Jesus Christ. The Son of God. In these uncertain times, we want to hang and associate very closely with those things that are absolutely sure and certain. And so I'm just going to close with a couple of these here as, as, uh, as I bring this to a close. <clears throat> One of the certain truths that we know is God is good. God is good. Now, you, you, can, you can even go online and read the devotionals from Christians. Well, if God is good, then why is... And, and they'll, they'll, they'll spin a yarn. 
and they'll try to knock us off of the sure foundation that God is good. God is a good God. And we need to be absolutely sure and certain of that in our thinking. We don't waver from that. We don't deviate from that. We do not back, you know, back up on that. We stand sure that God is good. And that's a certainty. Here's another certainty. God is loving. Well, again, if God is so loving, why didn't he stop the COVID-19? Well, that isn't God's fault. And if God was to stop everything, then I don't think he'd be much of a God. I think we'd be little robots. No, this, this COVID-19 is a direct result of Adam and Eve taking of the fruit in the garden. Disease is part of the package that's been passed down. But God is loving. And God's word is that he, he doesn't want anyone to perish but all to come to repentance. And God is especially loving towards you. Oh my goodness, I have loved you with an everlasting love, the scripture says. And we rest in that. We take solace in that. And we don't deviate. We don't question that. God is loving. Thirdly, God has good plans for you. Now again, these, these are things that I try to reiterate on a regular basis. That Romans 8.28 says that he is working all things. Well, I don't know how God is going to work this for good, pastor. Yes, he is. Because God's word says he's going to work all things. Now, we don't have to know, but we do have to trust him on that. And his word says he is working out everything for good. And we have to trust him in that. That God is going to take us higher and further and make us stronger and better when this is all said and done. And that leads me then to the last point. This too will come to pass. Hey, this COVID-19 is not going to be lasting for five years. For one year. It's not going to be lasting much more than a couple months. Probably. Probably. I mean, there's, there's some positive signs, there's some dark signs, but there's some real positive signs as well. And this too will come to pass. This is not going to be forever. And we are going to get back on our feet. We are going to be gathering together. Yes, we are. We're going to be gathering together. But it, it, it's not going to last forever. And you're going to be more stable. You're going to be, you're going to be better off economically. God is going to bring things to pass and it's going to be good for you. You know, it's interesting living with two 94-year-olds. Perspective. I shared this with the chairman of our district. I'm on the district board for our, for our fellowship. I hate boards. Hate them. <laughs> but I was sharing this with our, our chairman, Pastor Carrie Landsver Landsverk. She, uh, she pastors down in Ryle, Wisconsin. Wonderful woman of God. Godly woman. But I said, you know, Pastor Kerry, living with 94-year-old people, they look at things in a whole different perspective. Now, of course, with Pastor, he doesn't understand what's going on, that, you know, the words don't mean anything to him any longer, and so you can't discuss it with him. Mrs. Paulzer does, and, and, and there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a concern from her. There is. But, you know, um, we were talking about this the other day, about how, you know, when the war was on, there was all kinds of uncertainty. You know, all kinds of uncertainty during the war. Is my husband going to come home? Is my son going to come home? Is my brother going to come home? You know, they talk about in their, their little town, you know, just a couple thousand people. Not even a couple thousand, I think it's a couple hundred. But they said that when a military car, if a military car was spotted, they knew one thing for sure, for certain, that car was going to a home. And there'd be soldiers that would step out and say, your son or your father or your brother has been killed in action. Thank you for his, his invaluable service to this nation. And they said that when they would see those cars, they knew one thing for sure. Some, some gentleman had, had, had been killed in the war. And they never knew, is he going to come home or not? Now, you talk about uncertainty, right? But you know, it came to pass. It did. World War II came to a close. Life was in a shuttered, was in a shuttered condition during the war. Rations, they couldn't get the supplies they needed. A lot of uncertainty with that. But you know, the war came to a close. 
the Great Depression, the Great Depression where these dust storms, pastor would talk about these dust storms that would come in during the, the 12 o'clock noon and would make it as black as midnight. And he said that sometimes when that dust storm finally rolled out, and sometimes it was a couple of days, he said there would be two and three and four feet of sand deposited, so much so that the fence posts were covered and their animals could literally just walk over the fence posts and the barbed wire and escape out of the fences because the, the dust and the sand had piled up and then they'd have to go out and dig out those posts and barbed wire and reset them again. You know, can you imagine living during that time? And no one listening to this devotional was alive during that time. I doubt it, other than Pastor and Mrs. Paulser. All of us are younger, but you know what? They came through on the other side. And those of us who know Pastor and Mrs. Paulser know they were the better for it. And so we're going to come through on the other side. We have a good God. God is good. He's sovereign over all. He's got good plans for us. And this is going to come to pass. And we've got to hang in there. We've got to hang in there. We've got to comply with what they're asking us to comply with. Hang in there. And we're going to gather together again. We're going to have church services. Life is going to return to normal. And let's believe God for that. So let me just say a couple of things, a couple of announcements. This Sunday, we want to have communion. Now again, we're not sure if it's going to be from our house or from the church. I don't know. But we're going to have communion together. And uh, let's, let's try to watch the service live and participate in communion. And that'll mean you'll have to use some orange juice and a graham cracker. That'll mean you'll have to use a Mountain Dew and uh, a, a piece of bread. That'll mean a cup of coffee and... Uh, uh, you know, a saltine cracker, whatever. But we want to participate in communion this Sunday. So we're coming on air at 10 o'clock. We're coming on air at 10 o'clock. We're going to have songs and worship, and we're going to have a regular service together. Pastor Kim and I will be dressed up, <laughs> and Victoria will be dressed up. I don't know if anyone else, you know, from the worship team, I, I don't think they'll be able to join us, obviously, but um, we're, we're, we're going to be gathered together, and we want to have communion this Sunday. Uh, also, too, we want to mention, too, if you don't know it as well, uh, that our online giving is now an option for you. Now, again, to those of you who give through checks and cash, I, I would just kind of suggest doing the same thing. Send it through the mail. Find a way to, you know, get it to us. And thank you, thank you, thank you to those who have been uh, just so consistent and faithful in your giving. You know, you're not letting this time... Uh, be a time where you stop your, your, your faithful giving. And again, we need to sow seed. We need to sow seed during this. Pastor Kim and I are sowing seed during this time of downturn. Um, so we, 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 we welcome, we thank you uh, for those who have been bringing their tithes and offerings. Um, but we also have the online option as well. And let, let's stay in prayer. Let, let's stand strong in prayer. Let's stand strong in faith. And just believe that God, that God is, is uh, working things out and is going to bring us through on the other side. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, even as the sun is on my face and, and the warmth that that sun brings. Thank you, Jesus, for that, how that brightens our day and our perspective. And Lord, I pray your blessing upon every home, every family. We pray your full, abundant provision for them that you will supernaturally and sovereignly provide for them. Lord, we pray your divine protection over them that not a one, not a one would contract this COVID-19 that not a one that it would touch them, Lord, that a divine protection would be over us. Lord, we pray for mercy for our nation and our world, Lord, that mercy would be granted, whether that's through a vaccine that's created or drugs that are already in existence that would that would stop and mitigate this, this virus, Lord. We, don't, we really don't care. We're just asking you, Lord, for mercy. That, uh, that no more lives would be lost, Lord, that mercy would come to us and that this virus would be halted. We pray for uh, President Trump, Lord. What a responsibility. Oh, my gosh. What a responsibility is on his shoulders. And, Lord, we pray for wisdom and discernment and direction for him, Lord. We pray that you will raise up people who will be wise and discerning and will speak wisdom and counsel to him, Lord God. We pray that you'll sustain him. Lord, we pray for the health care workers, Lord, who are on the front lines. Oh, my goodness. These men and women who are on the front lines and putting their lives really on, on, online, Lord, 
Uh, we pray for your divine protection upon them and encouragement to them. Lord, we pray that you will raise up uh, we as Christians, Lord, as never before, the one we have opportunity to be able to share the love of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the care of God, that you will anoint us to be able to minister into people's lives and to always and ever point them to Christ. We ask and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, hey, thank you for the the letters, <laughs> the cards, the emails, the texts, the FaceTimes that we are receiving. In one sense, I think this might be the busiest time ever for us. <laughs> but I love it. We love it. And we encourage you to do the same to others. We, we trust you're not just doing this to us, and I don't think you are, that you're doing it to others as well, staying in contact with them. Um, and we just look forward to being with you when we can gather together and have services and hug on one another and give handshakes and greet one another. But until then, we want you to know, Pastor Kim and I love you dearly. Yes, we do. We love you, we love you, we love you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you once again. God bless you.